I don't know why people are so uncomfortable with naked. Okay, this is the thing, so this is where it started. You could be having a conversation with your homeboy. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, man, the bitch in the red. You see the girl in the red? Da, 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 da. And you walk in the bathroom, now everybody got to look at the ground. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get the uncomfortableness of bathroom just because somebody got their swiper out. You swipe out, you swipe out. I don't give a damn. I don't want nothing to do with it. But he always, so I don't run from it. He always take it back to being comfortable, being two lions in the room. Yeah. I mean... I still don't get it. For me. Like, I still don't get what they got to do. Like, like, hey, ain't no wrong with being a lion. Like, for me, you walk in the bathroom, for me, it's just like, that's your preference. Like, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, all right, bet. I'm not about to feel uncomfortable. I know I'm about to make myself feel comfortable regardless, for me. So you could do that, but the way you said it, it's like, like you looking for somebody else. To <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't, that's one thing I said. I ain't looking to see nobody else okay. meet. Okay. To be honest, yeah, I ain't uncomfortable. Like, yeah, do yes. what you do. Naked women, naked men, all love. My yeah, shit, know, just be, be you. You know who he is, Sauce. He's the guy, man. Walk straight into the shower after practice, turn and face everybody. Won't have conversation. Yeah, yeah man. And, hey, y'all see y'all see that new that new snowfall episode? I want to talk. Yeah, that's it. Oh, know. we naked. I still want to know how you feel about snowfall. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, hey, man. And hey, this is why they call it the pivot, man. Welcome, Sauce, man. This is Freddie T. I'm RC. My man, Chan. Shout out to our partners over at Happy Dad, also our sponsors, DraftKings. Coach Cortez Harris said it was A1 Sweet Feet Sauce Man Gardener. It's obviously been shortened as you've continued to grow, continued to mature. You said three goals before the season. You wanted to be a Pro Bowl player, check. You wanted to be all pro, end up being first team all pro, the first corner that makes the team as a rookie in 41 years. You're the first all-pro corner since Darrell Revis, who's a Hall of Famer going in this year for the New York Jets. The team didn't necessarily have the success it seemed that was most important to you with all the individual accolades. When you look back at this first year, now becoming a bona fide star in New York, what allowed you to be so prepared as a player but also as a person? I would probably say, like, we just had this APG program today um, at the facility. We were talking to the uh, guys, the guys who serve the country. And a couple things they talked about was containing and isolating. So they isolating all the, all the unnecessary stuff, all the distractions, all the bad noise for me. By containing, it mean we keeping everything in-house, you know, the things that only we should know about. So I would say I understood that, you know, the whole season. I was able to isolate out all the noise because playing in New York for me is going to come with a lot of noise, especially when you're doing good. So I was isolating the noise so that way I could not get complacent and just, you know, keep grinding. And that's what came with it. Like you really understand your responsibility oh, past your age. You know what I'm saying? At this age right now, you should be still wild. You should be running around. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be trying to help people get out of, get out of gangs and things like that. How did you mature so fast? I knew you grew up in a rough neighborhood. Most of those guys don't mature fast because they're around a bunch of knuckleheads. I, I would say that's it. I grew up in Detroit in a rough neighborhood, but, you know, the, the people around me who was in the streets, you know, they was the ones telling me to stay focused on football. You know what I mean? And it's really, that's really rare for real. You know, that's why I, um, I appreciate them guys. I appreciate Detroit. You know, I was always just focused, but at the same time, trying to stay focused, I was still seeing stuff at the same time. So I'm like, all right, this is what I want to do. You know, starting with the end goal in mind, you know, I want to play in the NFL, but, you know, I got to know the ropes. I got to know what I got to watch out for. Just like me coming to New York, first thing I did, you know, I got to see what's going on in New York. Like, whether it's me going on the internet, going on YouTube, watching stuff, like, I got to know what's going on. I can't just come here and just li be living living so free. I'm in the NFL, uh, this, this cool, you know what I mean? I got to know where I'm at at all times. So I feel like that's why I matured so fast, always just watching my surroundings, always being aware. Fear. You can say it, you ain't no bitch shit. Like, I don't really think it's that, you know what I mean? Because 
I make sure I'm protected no matter where I'm at. So. <laughs> hey, he's right. No, 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 no. Because I, I think, say, not, you, not, it's, not it's also too. Of... It's also being aware. Yes. Right. When when you grow up in certain places, like I'm from the Inno, right, and I always have my head on the swivel. If a dude walk past you two times or he brush up against you one time, you say, okay, if we see him coming back down the street, we understand what type of time it is. And I think it's it's that awareness that he's that he's mentioning. But I think all forms of respect, all forms of awareness does start from a level of fear. Mm-hmm. It right. does start from a level of survival. Right, and some people tend to call it paranoia. It's just being alert, being aware and understanding, you know, your surroundings and, and pivoting back. You, you went to MLK, inner city, uh, Detroit. I want to go back there for a minute, talk about Detroit, because when I hear Detroit, the D, right, I'm, I'm thinking about BMF. You were born around the time when BMF first was taken off and they left a lot behind back there in the city. Did you have those OGs? Cause I know there's a lot of dope boys up that way, much like in my small hometown. When you were performing on a high level and being a star in high school, did you have the OGs that used to try to help steer you in the right direction, give you handshakes, stay out the street, make sure you're good and also protect you? Oh yeah, most definitely. Like when I was growing up, my family, they didn't ran Detroit. For me, especially my neighborhood that I was at, like, that I was in. You know, I had relatives on dang near every block. I feel like that was the easy part. You know, that that's what made it easy, just having those, the people support me. Like, I mean, my mom, she was so strict. I mean, I remember I used to wait till she went to sleep to, to leave the house. Like, I used to do little stuff like that. You know, I used to be, I was a bad kid, right. you know, but at the same time, I made sure I did the main things that was necessary, right? I made sure I was always at practice. And in school, I always made sure I had an elementary 4.0 easily, you know what I mean? So I always made sure I took care of all that, but at the same time, I used to I used to be a bad kid. Not bad in terms of like the way I treat elders and adults, but like I used to get in a lot of fights. Just being a kid. Yeah, Just I used, being a kid. Yeah, I used, to, I used to be getting a lot of fights at school, you know? No, I think he's talking about being a bad kid. It's 15,000 people in my hometown, not much. And uh, talking about a bad kid, and everybody that looks at me, he would tease me because I told him I got, a, I got a situation in 2008 where I, I ended up having to go spend a few hours in jail. That's, that's the hardest I've ever been in my life. But in my childhood, I would throw rocks from the bushes at cars passing by. Yeah. Just bad, dumb shit. Right. So we've all gone through that. He asked about the OGs in the hood, and I think we've we've talked about that on this show so many times that a lot of what we see growing up is about circumstance. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding that these are the situations that I'm in, here is the possibilities of me getting out, and these are the avenues. You don't drink, right? You don't smoke. Um, You mentioned already your mother being extremely strict on you. Talk a little bit about that relationship and her working overnight shifts, working at the plants. You saying, look, ma, I need to get to this camp to go show folks who I am. I need to get to this tryout so I can show them that I belong there. And you weren't the high school superstar when you got to school, right? right? You had to wait till your junior year at King. So what did your mom support and how did that eventually help you to start becoming who you were by the time you left as a senior? She was always being strict. Like every time she was being strict and telling me not to go somewhere, something always happened. You know what I mean? So that's why when people say Mom, mamas know best, you know, they really do. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, man, I, I used to hate it when I was younger when she told me I couldn't go somewhere and when she told me I couldn't go go to my friend's crib, you know, all of that. And I used to hate it, but it was for the better, you know. Um, she used to give me her last when it came to the football camps for me, and I, I go there, I, I dominate. <laughs> you know, I worked out. Like, I, I, I remember always telling, I'm like, Ma, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm pay it back, back to you. You know what I mean? When I, when I get to the NFL, like, she never doubted me. For me, she never said like, what if you don't make it or you not gonna make it there? She was always like, all right, for me. And, she always give, you know what I mean? And uh, that's why now I'm at the point where, you know, I just want to make sure she's straight, you know, whatever it is she need, whatever it is she want for me, she can get it. And with that, man, like you told your mom you would take care of. We all did it and we all took care of our moms, you know what I'm saying? What about the other people? Because a lot of young dudes struggle with 
the handouts, struggle with everybody wanting, and you you front page of magazines and newspapers now. Everybody know you got bread. How, how do you decide who you really are in debt to and who is just somebody that was around? Back then, like, if you if you wouldn't know the type of time I was on, like, it was over with. Like, you can't even be around me. You know what I mean? I've been like that since I was young. Then when it came to high school, I just got in my close friend group. The majority of them still play football. It's probably like four, five of us. One of them, a doctor, trying to be a doctor. He go to Western Michigan. And you know, uh, they don't even really ask me for nothing. My family don't really ask me for nothing, especially the ones who, who wasn't around when I was, when I was down. When me, my mom, my brother, my sister, when we was going through it, the ones who wasn't down with us, they don't ask me for nothing because they already they know they what know. the answer is. Luckily, that's not a problem that I have. Like, I don't really have a problem like with everybody just asking me for money, but that's one reason I didn't want to get drafted by Detroit. Now, that would have been a total different story. You know what I mean? I would have had so many people asking for tickets. You know, then people would have probably seen me around Detroit. Then they would have been trying to hang out with me. Then they would have been trying to ask me for money, this, this, and that for me. And there's so many variables that go into it. Yeah, that's why I'm happy I am where I'm at right now. Where you are now, do you ever look back and laugh at the three-star rating that you had coming out of high school? Not really, man. It was all a part of God's plan. You know, I wasn't the biggest guy. I was, I was so, I was so little, man. Like, <laughs> I remember my coach, he was trying to put me on JV. Hmm. But, like, I was, I was, I was kind of decent for me. I was smooth at receiver, but I just wasn't that big. I was supposed to go to this scrimmage, the black and gold scrimmage at high school. I missed it. He tried to put me on JV for me, so... I ended up going back to Little League to play. Like, our Little League, you could play to you 14. Like, it's people getting offered out of Little League. Like, the majority of the guys that's in the league from Detroit all play for, like, Powell League. Powell is, like, huge in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can't even explain it, man. What's in the sauce? What's your motivation to be, obviously, you want to be the best? So you don't use that as motivation. What has been your motivation to get you to be, you know, defensive player of the year, all pro, uh, like RC said, since 1981, since Ronnie Lott. As a matter of fact, do you even know who Ronnie Lott is? Yeah, I had heard about him. Well, unlike that. Jessica Alba. <laughs> do you know who <laughs> Ronnie Lott is? Yeah, I, I heard about him, you know, and I heard about the stuff he did, like, before I even became all pro, which is crazy. Mm. You know, he's somebody that my coach used to always talk about, uh, my cornerback coach, Tony Oden. For me, he was always talking about him, so, you know, I'm familiar with, with who, he, who he is, for sure. But I don't know the secret sauce, man. It's like, it's not a secret to it. You know, just making sure I do the little things right. You know what I mean? Because the little things gonna lead, gonna lead to something. My mom, she motivated me, like I said, the stuff she, she's done, my family, the youth, the kids, for me, the, the trenches of, the, of Detroit, I motivate them, they motivate me. You know, I wanna be the best. That don't just happen overnight. That don't just happen in one year. You know, just because I had a great year last year or good year or whatever, that don't mean I'm the best. You know, I could have been the best that year for me, but that don't just mean I got, I'm got. i the best. I got to just keep stacking. You know what I mean? Keep chopping wood. You know, those are the, those are the things that motivate me. Bro, you are an old soul. God, least. And I don't know. I think that's probably why God didn't give me long arms and why I was under six foot and all these things and I had to work hard and I didn't get drafted because I could not act like this. Right? Like, if I was all pro as a rookie, if I was, you know, I'm an LSU guy, you know what I'm saying? I watched you and Jamar Chase and for an entire year, in his rookie year, nobody ever did him what you were able to do. And also too, man, you are mean as hell. You know what I mean? And like, you don't see that in every corner. You know, like there, there's you and, and, and there's Jalen and then, you know, Slay, who is also all pro caliber player. He's like the sweetest dude I've ever been around. He's funny as hell, he's cool, like you have, that edge to you and watching the secret ingredient though it, it kind of gives you an opportunity to see what makes a person that way and you were explaining watching someone get shot during a robbery and then you said and after that I just got on about my route when you grow up seeing things like that how much does that help you just even in the way you look at the adversity of something like a football game. I catch myself thinking like, hey, bro, that really could have been me for me. Like, if I wanted to go get some snacks or something for me, that's the store I was going to. You know, I could have been going to that store, and then I could have been walking out the door for me. You never know, like, what could have mistakenly happened. You know, so I just think about all the things, you know, going into 
going into a game, you know what I mean? I, uh, I always think about like what I've been through in Detroit and it just keep me going. Like, I don't think I'm an old soul for me. Like, I can't explain it. Cause like I'm on a pod, like this a, this a podcast. So first off, have you ever listened to him talk on this show? Yeah, this is not a podcast. This is sometimes it's like a little bit of porn, depending on <laughs> nah, depending on, right, the, right. on the mood right. on the mood right. he's in. Uh, it's a damn it's a therapist session, yeah. depending on who we're talking to. And in truth, bro, like we've all seen you play, yeah. and, and the world, the entire world, knows exactly who one is when he steps on on the field. But I am more interested in the person. It's why I read the articles. It's why I watched the documentary because we were talking at Pro Bowl and I called some of my homeboys after we talked because you were talking about Stingley, right. who's a kid I've known since, I, since he was 14. And you were talking about Tariq Woolen and you were saying you hate that people try to pin all of y'all against one another. Like if Sauce is playing well, let's see what Woolen is doing. Or if Woolen's playing well, let's see what Sting is doing. And you said, you made it a point to talk to him after the game, to tell him certain things. That's just maturity. It's a fact. What, what makes you being somebody who wants to be great himself, but also wants to see others excel to that level, what makes that important to you at such a young age? I feel like if you want to be great, you, you got to do that. For me, like, we were just talking about the secret sauce. I can't keep it all to myself. I got to instill it in other people if I got to, if I see Tariq, if he do something, if he got a got a habit of doing something that's really not gonna work for him, you know, I probably ain't gonna tell him mid game because we playing against each other. But like after the game, I'm, I might be like, hey, bro, hit my jack for me so we could watch some film. We could talk this over. You know what I mean? Because if I want to be great, I feel like I'm doing somebody else a, a disservice by saying I like, by just knowing like I could be telling him this, but now nah, I ain't gonna tell him this because I want to be better than him because I'm competing with him like. Nah, that's not the case for me. We can all be great. Like, it's enough, it's enough, you know, space in this world for all of us to eat. I don't really know. I don't really know about that sauce. Because <laughs> most people aren't 6'3 with Floyd Mayweather feet and long ass arms. <laughs> like, that's you know fact. what I'm saying? Like, that's a fact. Like, you know what I'm saying? You study and I, I guarantee you do all that work, but you can't tell a dude that's 5'11 to play like you play. Nah, that's a fact, but this is the thing. Like, some people just blessed, like, with, with, with natural length and stuff like that, but. I watched some 5'11 corners because me being 6'3, I want to be able to go on that field and have been and do this and do that like I'm a 5'11 corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I respect those guys because some receivers are like 6'3, you got T. Higgins probably like 6'5, and there's some 5'11 guys who got to go up against them. So it's like a utmost level of respect for those guys. So you know, I watch a lot of guys who like shorter than me. You feel me? Do you ever tell them you can't do that? Like, hey, how did you do that in the in the in the Packers game? Nah, you can't do that. That's <laughs> nah, I ain't never. I ain't never. You ain't gonna that. hurt their feelings. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna lie. This one ain't for you. Yeah, this one ain't for you. Don't you, try bro. that. Don't try that. Speaking about iron sharpening iron, uh, another one of your teammates we had on the show, Garrett Wilson. Uh, he also won Offensive uh, Rookie of the Year. The, the the odds of that happening on the same team is crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys have have you guys talked about you know that happening and you know celebrating that moment? I mean, we talked about it happening. You know, we was talking about it before the season. We had just joke about it during the season, but like now we on our way into year two. You know, so that's down the drain. We don't even talk about it no more. Okay, like, it's just something that happened. Like we got to move on to the next. Like I can't even let him get caught too much in that in, in having that conversation because you know I don't want him to get too distracted by it, you know, not saying that he will, you know, because he, he he a chill guy, you know, he wouldn't even do that. But like, it's time to move on a year two. Like, what, what can we do now? Bro, a little bit over a year ago, you were playing at a non-power five school. Three, four years before that, you were a three-star recruit. A little bit before that, you couldn't even make the varsity team. Now, you have all those accolades and you walking around with cheese heads, having seances, and texting Aaron Rodgers, That's fair. right? You got OBJ on the line. What has that ascension been like for you? Where it's dudes, man, literally, bro, you probably been watching Aaron Rodgers since you've been watching football. Like, you've been seeing him playing against Detroit since you were a baby. Odell Beckham Jr. becomes one of the biggest stars in the world when you really are getting in 
to football. And now those same people see you on the level that they are. How does that feel for you? And is there ever a moment, bro, where you do kind of take it in? It's like, man, I'm blessed, man. Like to, to be at this point so quickly, this isn't for everybody. This isn't an everyday thing. I always catch myself saying I'm blessed, you know, but then I'll be like, this ain't enough. I gotta go get more. You know what I mean? But I do that a lot. It's funny you said that. Like, like I remember I was at dinner with A-Rod. I'm like, damn, I'm having dinner with Aaron Rodgers right now. <laughs> you feel me? Like, then I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking after we got done eating, I'm like, is he gonna make me pay for it or is he gonna, you feel me? <laughs> he covered, he covered the tab. I'm like, he's solid for that for me. Cause he he really ain't had to do that. You know what I mean? But that was just. It's just a great vibe being there, and then, and then OBJ, you feel me, like, we done came up with a whole handshake, and we was in Arizona, like, great vibes, man. So I always catch myself saying that, man, and uh, it's just a blessing, like you said, it's a true blessing. Did the organization bless you with that responsibility? Like, to Ryan's point, like, I've never seen a rookie come in Hell and no. recruit guys. I've never seen a rookie come in and really just be as arrogant as you are. <laughs> Cocky, uh, confident, they call it, man. Well, I haven't seen it like that. Bro, you're right off for Lambeau Field, the most sacred home field in all of football with a cheese head on as a rookie, fam. That's arrogant. And we could switch the words around, and it works when people can't score touchdowns on you, too. See, that's the thing, though. I, like, this was year one for me, like, I didn't know how sacred Lambeau Field was. You feel me? Like, respectfully. You know, I know now. I can't say whether I'd do it again, like, if I was to do Like, I can't say yes, I can't say no. Like, you just have to see. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but, yeah, man, um, they didn't just tell me, like, all right, this is your responsibility, but I feel like I can get things done. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm not just one of those, I wasn't just one of those rookies who was just, like y'all said, running wild, just trying to do some extra stuff. Like, they know I'm going to do what's best for the, for the team. You know, they know I won't, I won't, like, disappoint. You know what I mean? So, and then the, the guys, they, they, they love me. You know, they rock with me. You know, guys who probably I never met before, and then when guys get to meet me, you know, they, they rock with the vibe. You know what I mean? So that's probably what it is. You know, they know that a lot of guys around the league, whether it's, Guys my age or vets or coaches or whatever, you know, they know they um, got a level of respect for me. And yeah, it just, it just, it just naturally happens. I think it's safe and, and easy for a team to really trust you with that, you know, uh, with that assignment, uh, if they even call it that. I mean, you only gave up 54 yards the entire year. They, they trust you. Uh, but that, that brings up a question, um, the locker room. You, know, you guys had a fairly pretty young team, and you're you're a star. You're one of the leaders. Uh, were you ever comfortable in that role as a rookie, being a leader at such a young age? No, I would say I am. You know, what I mean, if it's, I would say it's easy to lead when you're doing the the, the little things right. You know, because especially when you drafted number four, you know everybody gonna be watching you. Whether it's the guys you came in with, whether it's the guys that's in your room, whether it's the guys that been there, it's just who vets. Mm. You know, they're going to they gonna watch you. You know, um, I feel like I was leading by example. You know, that's where it started. Just leading by example because I'm a rookie. You know, I'm coming in, you know, I'm not talking too much. You know, but I'm just being around guys like DJ. And, you know, he, he basically stamped me. You know, he wanted the guys that stamped me, him, CJ. When they stamped me, you know, that's when I started becoming a little bit more vocal. By the end of the season, it was just crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> By the end of the season, it was crazy. But yeah, man, uh, it was great, man. You know, I felt comfortable doing it. You know, when you're a natural leader, it just it's gonna come out at some point. Correct. You yep. know, but you can't overstep no boundaries. You gotta just you gotta see how everything is. All right, I see these guys. You know, no matter what it is, they wanna win. You know, they not they not power hungry. You know, they not just saying like everybody else gotta be quiet. Uh, you a rookie, you gotta be quiet. Only I can talk. You know, they. Oh, he making sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He only saying he's saying hella, hella right things. You know, so then it just, it just became second nature. Marcus Freeman was your DC uh, when you got to Cincy, and he said he ain't calling no grown man sauce until he give him a reason to. Right. And apparently, it's uh, Central Florida. Mm -hmm. You you take a pick back, and he said that was when he was like, I, right, I can call you sauce now. 
Fred was talking about the, the leadership role and, and how you were able to feel comfortable being a leader. How do you approach continuing to earn that going forward? Because you get graded on a curve, right? When, when you look at a rookie, don't get me wrong, if when you make first team all pro, that means whether you're in year one or you're a decade in, you've outshined your peers. That, that's how you get that. But now you're going to be compared to Sauce Gardner every year. Yep. The n- next year, if you, when you give up two in one game, right, if you do, I'm not saying you will, but if that happens, people are not going to say, well, it's only his second touchdown of the entire season and it's week 12. They're going to be like, what, what happened to Sauce this game? Are you prepared or how are you preparing yourself for the level of scrutiny that your great play, your great leadership your, your level of maturity has now put on yourself. I would say, like I just said, doing the, the small things right. You know, I can't do what I did last year. You know, I can do what I did, but it's going to be like a new standard. You know what I mean? Because there's people that's probably going to do what I did last year, and I can't be complacent. I can't be in that same spot. So I just got to keep, I got to keep working. And honestly, for me, like, you don't want to be on Twitter getting talked about <laughs> for me on Sunday. So that got to go into account like, hey, I ain't about to be on Twitter getting bashed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to be one of them guys, oh, he gave up too. And this is one of the things, like, I never wanted to be a guy who was like, all right, he a rookie, so he can't lead. You know what I mean? Like, all right, he gave this many touchdowns up because uh, he a rookie. I never was, I never liked that type of stuff, you know? Because, damn, yeah, they, it's, it's not an age, it's not an age uh, requirement when it comes to being a leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can lead no matter what age you are. So. Hey, you don't have any vices per se, right? You, you don't. You don't. When you had the sauce in your hand, was that for the women in New York? You wanted the, nah, the women in New York to see you on Sports Illustrated? Nah, that would that wasn't even it for me. Like <laughs> they did me, they did me a little dirty, you know, respectfully. Nah, I rock with what they got going on at uh, Sports Illustrated, but they told me this is the cover shoot. So I went and did the cover shoot. You know, I had the face mask in, in my hand, doing the little cover shoot pictures. And then after that, we went like under the tunnel to do just portraits. We do all the portraits for me. We take all the pictures, me, you know, looking right at the camera, side, side. Then it was like, all right, we got this other thing. You know, we want you to dip your hand in this, you know, um, just take the picture. I'm like, damn, for me, do, do I gotta do this? You know what I mean? <laughs> and they was like, uh, Nah, it's, it's just like one of the things so-and-so just asked. Uh, just like, it's, it's pretty cool, this is not. So I'm like, for me, all right, but fast forward, that's the picture they ended up using for the cover shot. That was crazy. You know what I mean? The last picture I took at the shoot was the picture that they used for the cover of Sports Illustrated. You know, I can't even believe it. I, mean, I just woke up. I woke up. I just seen it. I'm like, oh, shoot. That's, it's calm for me, like, I like it, you know, it's cool. Then I get to look at the comments, I'm like, damn, for me, they <laughs> plays like they go crazy in the comments. <laughs> They're the type of person I am, I really don't be tripping, for me, like, right. like, cause I know, for me, I feel like the people who are mature enough to know, they know, but it's like, the comments, I'm like, damn, I'm laughing at something, I'm like, oh yeah, he cooking me, I me. gotta push back a little bit, cause you done said comments three times already, and on Twitter twice. If you don't care about comments, why you read all of them? Nah, be, they be funny, you feel me? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta tune in. You know, I, I'm one of them people, I'm cool, with, I can read comments, you feel me? I don't care if somebody talking crazy, I don't care what it is. I can read comments and laugh at them. I can read comments and be like, all right, I'm about to dominate on Sunday, you feel me? I could do, I feel like me personally, I can do that. Like, that's why I feel like I, I shine on Sundays for me. That's dealing with criticism, though. Yeah. And as a, what, we, what word do we use? We using cocky or confident? Uh, self-assured. There we go. We'll make it nice. You're a Appreciate self-assured you. young Appreciate man. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But the criticism of it, when you can't be, I can say, I can't criticize you on the field. 54 yards, you're giving up. One touchdown that you say, you really ain't giving them the damn touchdown. On the field, you're doing it. But now at this level, you'll be criticized by everything you do. How does a man with the self-assurance that you have Really deal with that criticism, cause you people listen, people really do listen. I feel, man, it ain't no pressure for me when you got a foundation, when you know what you've been through. You know, you just mentally strong, you mentally tough. You know what I mean? Somebody who, who probably just got here by mistake, the criticism eat them alive. You know, but when you got you a good little foundation, 
been through some things, went through a lot of adversity, you know, that can be non-football related. You know, when it comes to social media, for me, it ain't gonna, ain't gonna be no pressure. You just use that for the DMs. Huh? Huh? <laughs> you said what? <laughs> he slid that on a smooth out. Boy, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish I was single with DMs for a round. Goodness No, nah, I don't, for me, I'm a taking young man, for me. You, you oh, take it. I'm taking, yeah. He I'm take it. He's kept. Taking. Oh, you take it? I'm taking. You kept. I'm kept. Huh? <laughs> I'm kept. Like that. Yeah, that's a fact. This guy right here is crazy. Watch out for him, man. <laughs> no, but uh, what was one of the funniest comments you read about the, the cover? Somebody said it was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was like when she say she don't hurt, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> when she say she don't hurt, it's like, it said, like, when she say she don't hurt, and then it says Sauce Gardner with a cola, and just got me sitting there like, with, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. officially your first meme. That's going to be <laughs> that's the meme. The man. <laughs> that's right. Oh, boy. Hey, you know what? The honest to God truth about it is, though, bro, you just finished your rookie year, and you're in the cover of Sports Illustrated. Oh, yeah. There are certain things that players, that people, athletes in general can only dream of. You know, it's dudes that it's it's dudes that are going to be in the Hall of Fame, that play your position, that never got that. It, it's different, man. You have created a different level of attention for yourself based on your output, based on your success, doing what you're paid to do. And no matter how much they make fun of a cover or whatever that is, like that's you. Like you are a star. It's rumored that you are one of the possible teams for Hard Knocks. Hmm. Now, Hard Knocks usually make stars, and some dudes just come in there already. You're going you, you're gonna to walk into training camp. They're going to have you mic'd up. They're going to follow you around. What would that experience be like for you, and would people still like Ahmad Sauce Gardner? Because it's, no, it's different because now you say you're feeling yourself. You're into your own, right? You're going to be talking at practice. Everybody likes Garrett. Garrett's nice, right? <laughs> Garrett's ha harmless. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't know a nicer human than Garrett Wilson, oh, right? You're gonna be checking Garrett, talking bad to him. Everybody love a Rod. You might pick a Rod off, start talking crazy. If we get Sauce Gardner on Hard Knocks, are we still gonna like him? No, y'all gonna like me. For me, I'll be I'll be on some calm stuff in uh, training camp. You know, I'll be I'll be calm in the meetings, on the field. You know, I talk a little trash. It just depends. You know, sometimes you, you know, you've been at training camp for a little minute, you waking up seeing the same person extra early in the morning, like you just develop this, this anger. Like, <laughs> right. yo bro, like, why am I looking at you again? Like already, it just feel like we was just here. I closed my eyes, like I'm back here at training camp, day two, you know what I mean? Just little stuff like that. And then it get to like, day, what is it? 10 or something, then it just, it just get crazy. But I feel like everybody's still gonna like me. So you say you threw hands when you was little. Do you ever get in fights at practice? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. I remember I got into a uh, Denzel Mims. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I used to be trying to, I used to, to be throw trouble. you out the club? No, it wouldn't even, I don't even think I was in. <laughs> I don't even think I was in. Like it was one of them things like, we'd just be talking a little bit and then he tried to do something. I think he, he did something that was cheap. To, to one of my teammates, and I just ran on the field. I was just on time, feel me? But I don't remember exactly what happened, but. Hey, Sauce, to piggyback off RC's question about, about hard knocks, the biggest media market in the world, do you think it would be a, a good or bad thing for that added attention that hard knocks would bring? I think it would be great, you know, um, as long as the, the guys handle it right. You know what I mean? That can, that can be some, some great adversity, honestly you know, some great distractions because it can help us mentally, you know, going through this, like, all right, with all these cameras, how much can we continue to perfect our craft? Focus. You know, how much can we continue to stay focused? You know, and I feel like that's why it would be good. Good. And, you know, we got the guys who can help instill that into all of the players. You know, we got A-Rod, you know, we got C.J. Mosley, you know, hopefully we got Quentin, you know, uh, even me, D.J. Reed. Like, it's a lot of guys that can, you know, help instill that into all the players. So. You know, I don't see why it wouldn't be a great idea for me to, to make that happen. You're talking about A-Rod. I'm just interested in what the hell does old ass A-Rod and yo, you talk about at dinner? Because I remember when I got to the Dolphins at 21, we had, who was it, Fiedler or somebody? Some old ass quarterback, Sage Rosenfeld Jay? or something. Jay Fiedler. Jay, 
I ain't had nothing to talk to him about. I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't think, like, A-Rod ain't what y'all think he is. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a great thing, you know? Like, he got he got some energy, you feel me? He came, he came with some sauce, you know what I mean? He got he got to New York, you know, he feeling he feeling a little younger, you know? Like, I see a little pep in his step, you know, I'm like, oh no, all right, A-Rod, feel me? I'll be having to fill him out a little bit, and you know. Like we were just talking about it at the facility, like somebody I asked him, like, is you and Sauce officially best friends? <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is my best friend. I mean, we, we just be joking, man. He, he, he a cool guy for me. He a cool guy to be around. You know, uh, I'm just happy to have him on, on the team for real. Well, first off, anybody, anybody would be a cool guy after you played with Zach Wilson for a year. Anybody. Anybody that played the position, you'd be like, you know what? He's a cool guy. He might not even be a cool guy, but you're going to say that he's a cool guy because he's now the quarterback. And if anybody watched the New York Jets play defense last year, it was Super Bowl caliber. Y'all hit, y'all rushed, y'all covered. If you got to the second level, you was going to get killed, and it was sticky mm -hmm. on both corners. It was sticky in the slot. Safeties that hit. Backers that went sideline to sideline. Quentin Williams, absolute dog up front now you do have Aaron Rodgers and it's cool that y'all best friends but when you get a future Hall of Famer first ballot Hall of Famer things change you wasn't having seances and burning cheese heads because you thought that Aaron Rodgers was gonna make y'all okay you had a feeling that that makes you a championship contender y'all freaking schedule starts off crazy first six games y'all got big game after big game after big game what's the level of anxiousness understanding what the expectations of the Jets are. Now, y'all played with house money last year. That's a fact. This year, y'all the fave. Like I said earlier, it ain't no pressure, you feel me? Me and A-Rod, like I, we were saying, we built for it. And, you know, I know he gonna lead the offense. He gonna lead the whole team. You know what I mean? And, uh, like, he, he was gonna meet with the defense as well. So, we gonna make sure we on the same page. We got a, a great schedule, you know? A lot of good teams, a lot of great teams, you know? but. At the end of the day, we built for it. You know, that's why Kosala, Joe D, that's why they brought in guys like, you know, Alan Lazar, Miko, the guy who won the Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers, you know, all those type of guys. So I'm looking forward to it. There's a graphic out, and it got this tall, skinny corner in green and white. And then on the other side, it got like 12 number one wide receivers that got a lot of money and a whole lot of yards. And they saying, this is the marquee matchup. When you look at the Devontae Adamses and the Stephon Diggs and the times where people are going to be locked in and say, okay, let's see what one do this week. What's your approach to those games? Because Devontae Adams sat down with us and he told us when the Terminator match drop, it don't matter who on the other side. What's your approach when you line up on that line and it's press coverage against some of the best in the world? Dominate, you know. That's how I take care of my family. That's how I'm going to get paid. You know, I got to go against the best. You know, if I'm not going against those guys, I can't get no second contract. I can't get what I, what I want to get so I can take care of my family, make sure they're good, feel me? So, I say that's it. You know, dominate. How much do you remember about 9-11? I don't remember too, too much about 9-11. I think I was like one or two, one. feel me? One. So, I don't remember... Like, I don't remember nothing, like, when I was one or two. No, that's fair. But, yeah. like, I, I know about it. Like, I, I, I know a lot about it, though. Yeah, I, I took my kids to uh, uh, Ground Zero, and they were complaining, when are we going to be done? We got to get through the line. It was like TSA, the old TSA. Probably don't remember that either. But it was 45-minute wait just to get to the memorial. And um, I felt a bit disrespected. But also, I felt bad as a parent because they don't know. I haven't taught them much about it, right? But you guys, you guys open against the Bills. Uh, so the, the, the meaningful thing about 9-11 is it, it happened here, occurred here in New York, and it's, it's huge for New Yorkers. I mean, for the entire country, but New Yorkers eat, sleep, 9-11. Right. You got two New York teams that's gonna face off, and I'm sure the energy is gonna be crazy. What would you guys that's think? It's gonna be insane. Yeah. You got to look across the line, and one of the best receivers in the entire NFL is your matchup. You excited? You looking forward to going up against Diggs? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
uh, I did it a couple times for me. And I got to get used to it now, you know, because we're in the same division. So I'm looking forward to it. And to that point, how does that go, man? Because in, even in the AFC East, you're talking about Diggs. Y'all leaving out Reek and Waddle down there. That's fact. We got monsters down there. They brought in some more boys. Why you always bring up Miami like Bro, people care? Y'all are talking about receivers and leave Tyreek Hill out? Now, this man big, Tyreek Hill can run his ass off now. I'm telling you, bro, you got to back up, get your That's feet right, sweet That's feet, A1, whatever they called you. That's but fine. the Monday meeting, because I played with Sam Mattis. He was probably the best corner I played with. And Matt, and no matter what scheme they put up there, he'd argue. 10 on, he called it 10 on 10. I got him. Y'all worry about everything else. What's the conversation? Can you do that as a rookie? What's the conversation when the Stephon Diggs is up on a Monday, on a Monday game plan? When uh, J- Justin Jefferson, one of them boys up on a Monday? Do you say, Coach? That's me. I mean, I don't, I don't be trying to, like, step on toes for me. Like, you got a guy like DJ Reed who he can go. shutting the other side down. Like, it's, it's just, all right, I got my side, you got your side. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, Diggs, like, not even just Diggs. Like, they know where, I, they, they know where I'm going to be at for me. They, they know I'm the left corner. <laughs> you know, I ain't really hide nowhere. You know what I mean? But we got some crazy <laughs> stuff for, for this year. I ain't going to lie. We got some crazy stuff going in, though. I was going to say, because when I played, the corners that don't run would be criticized. If he that good, go follow him. That's a fact. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. You know, like, if they ever told me, like, yeah, we need you to do it, like, I'm not going to hesitate to yeah. say, like, I'm, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. You know what I mean? But I'm not just one of those. When I know I got a guy like DJ Reed, then I'm like, no, nah, DJ can do this. Let me get him. Like, for me, I just... Year one, like, I don't want to be stepping on no toes that I just got in the league, feel me? But I, if I could, I would. We, we mentioned Diggs. You mentioned Tyreek Hill. We saw the game, you know, Justin Jefferson. You know, we, we, we mentioned Devontae Adams. And these are all current great, great receivers, young, talented receivers. If you can bring back five GOAT receivers that you can match up against, that you will want to compete against each and every week, which five receivers would you bring back? I would say for one, Ocho. You know, I watch him a lot. I watch him a lot. Growing up, when I was playing receiver, he the only guy I used to watch. Like, that's the thing where I got a lot of my trash talking from. Like, especially at receiver, I used to be still in this lingo. Like, hey, I'm working. What you doing? Like, it's a little stuff like that for me. So him, Jerry Rice. Mm-hmm. You know you got to bring back Moss. Oh, yeah, Randy Moss. Steve Smith. Steve Smith, he, was, he be talking crazy for me. Mm-hmm. He, he heard, he heard my feelings a couple times. <laughs> <For real? laughs> we, we be going at it for him. Like, he done came to some of my games, and, you know, we'd just be talking crazy. Like, yeah. He like, yeah, if I was you, you wouldn't do me like you was just doing him. Because I swear, like, if you would have did me like that, I would have did this to you. I'm like, come on, man. Like, we, we just be going at it. Baby. Like, I would, I would love that matchup as well, man. He owed me one more. I, I, I was about to say, I missed another one. Uh, let me think. It tells you how much of a baby he really is. Man. You got to throw T.O. T.O. You got T-O. Megatron T.O. I was made that. No, that's what I was thinking. Oh, he from Detroit, too. Yeah. yeah. I got to say Megatron yeah, for right. me. I got to. Because he was go my back favorite, home at some point. He was my favorite receiver when I was in Detroit, and especially when he played in Detroit. So I got to say Megatron. I think this, I, I kind of want to end here, man, and just bring it back to, to where it started. When you won Defensive Rookie of the Year, you know, you get those awards, and there's all these people you can think. You can thank your agents, and you even said it on Secret and Greeting. There's all these people you want to thank, and it ended up being about your roots. It ended up being about where you were from, about your mother, about your brother, and all of the things and all of the people that built Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Going forward, what do you want to do to continue making them proud both on and off the field? I just want to do what I'm required to do and do the things that I'm not required to do uh, in a great way. So, like, the unseen work, the unrequired hours, you know, just putting in work to perfect my craft, you know what I mean, so I can be the best. So they won't have to own nothing forever, you know what I mean? So I just want to keep grinding, you know, keep motivating the youth. You know, I want to have a football camp soon. You know, I just want to. I just want to do a lot of stuff. I'm launching my foundation, so yeah, man, I'm just trying to do anything I could think of. You know, to just help motivate the whole city of Detroit. You know, and so that way, when people think about Detroit, it's not just violence. You know, it's a lot of positive things. So, you know, yeah. 
that makes me think about your your documentary and I think it's it's really unfamiliar to see someone as young as you are who's accomplished so much who could actually go back to Seven Mile who could actually go back to his hood and receive the love that you receive and hear the coaches talk about you in that way. And one thing that I thought was super cool was you were standing in the street with your brother, some cats pulled up, got out the car, dapped you off, got back in the car. But for them, it was, and they kept saying, nah, Sauce made it, you know. What was the thought behind that documentary? And when you got an opportunity to watch it, what did it make you feel? Honestly, man, I haven't even, I ain't even watched the whole thing. I mean, like, I don't know why, I don't really like watching myself too much, you know, when it comes to, like, YouTube or, like, I don't really like watching myself. I'd probably rather watch somebody else's documentary because <laughs> it's like, damn, I, I already been through this. I mean, uh, damn, I got to relive it again. You know what I mean? But, you know, I just wanted to motivate the youth, you know, let them know, like, it's not about, like, how you come up. You know, if you put your mind to it, you can, you can be great, you know what I mean? Like, if you go to school, if you do the little things right, you can end up in college. You can walk on if you got to. Like, there's nothing really stopping, stopping uh, the kids from, from making it out but the streets. And, like, I'm a guy that came up in that era. It's not even just the area. The streets still going on. It's something that's never going to stop. You know, I came up in that type of environment under those circumstances, and I didn't let it phase me. You know, I, and I'm here where I'm at today. So that's really what it was. And uh, I just wanted to motivate the youth. And I feel like it would help whoever going through something. I just wanted to uh, you know, put that on display. A lot of people don't know my story. You know, a lot of people never knew it. They just see saw So yeah, the guy who, yeah, he has some jewelry on. He come with the energy. He got the swag. You know, a lot of people don't really know, like, you know, how it came up. You know, the stuff I've been through. So I feel like I had to you know, showcase it. You know, a lot of people may, might think, oh, it's only after year one, he doing a documentary already, but it's just like, you know, growing up in Detroit and just seeing so many kids or the, the people who I was friends with, their little brothers, like, who was nice at football when I was, when I was younger. Now they in the streets. And, you know, I've seen, I seen that quite a few times. I'm like, this might be, this might be my sign to just put out a documentary because if it's going on in Detroit, it's going on in a lot more places. So let me showcase this real quick and let me touch, touch a lot of people. And coming out of Detroit, is you and who? Like to, that's setting that standard for Detroit. Football wise, right? Anything. Well, who, who, cause Detroit's a rough time. My mama came up there. Like, right. when you, you said it, when you think about Detroit, what you think of? Yeah, violence. 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 Yeah. Like it's, it's a rough not city. That's not somewhere you feel me. That's not somewhere like you like. Oh, I'm about to go on a vacation to Detroit. Hell no. And Never been, been said in the history of time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like then I, I wish it could be like that. You know what I mean? But sadly, it's not. You know. But like football wise, feel me. You got Brandon Graham. You got Donovan Peoples Jones. You got Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis. Yeah. You got a lot of people who, who giving back. You know, a lot of like artists. Like, Sean. If you right, you got Big Sean for me. You got some young artists who still giving back. You got Babyface Ray, got a guy named Baby Money, Tay B, Forty Two. Like you got, you got a lot of people who who just trying to give back to Detroit. You know, no matter where where they come from, no matter what they do. You know, that's why that's why I'm kind of like I'm excited to be from Detroit because I feel like we building something special. You know, the guys who making it out from we are just thinking of ways to just to give back. You spoke about your foundation. You got a name for it yet? I feel like SG1 Foundation might be it. The SG1 Foundation. What Ocho do when he changes his name? Are you officially Sauce? Nah. Like not, or will you ever change it to Sauce? I don't really. I feel like the majority of people already called me that to the point where like, I don't feel like I got to do too much. Like, I, I wouldn't do that anyway. So like, name your mama again. My mom, my mom right there. there. Right. Shit, they're gonna try to give me a whooping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, my mama hey, man, gave me that name. I saw, your, I saw your hair at the draft. You have a nice grade of hair. Why you always got on a scully? I don't know. For me, I just started wearing a scully. It's just like, I just keep wearing them now. You know what I mean? It's summertime, dog. Oh, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. I be going too long without getting a cut. You know what I mean? 
my barber, he lived kind of far now. You know, he, he, he be kind of far with it. So I can't just go and get up and just drive 40 minutes, you know, every week. You know what I mean? So that's it. Like, I'd be like, hey, I don't really care for me. We in OTAs. Like, training camp is probably going to be even worse because training camp is one of those, like, grind, grinds for me. I don't really, I don't really get cuts when, it, when it's training camp time. Well, here's what's, what you're, what's lucky for you, bro. You can't grow facial hair, it seems. So, it, no, I got for me. I got a little something. I, know, I, I got a little. My barber, he be, he be blowing me a little bit for me, cause he bald, mm. bald. Mm. Oh, 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 point at me. He be he be like, I, I don't even know the word to use. That's just like the. Yeah, he, he, he be blowing y'all. He, he, he be, he that, be that like, is a bad one. All right, I'm going to say this. He be, he be shaving it a little bit. So I haven't really got to see the full potential <laughs> of how much hair I can. Feel me? I got a little bit right here. Feel me? That's it. But <laughs> I, have, I, I haven't got to see, like, man, what can it truly get to? You know what I mean? But from now on, since y'all said it, like, since y'all thinking it, I know a lot of people might be thinking it. So I might tell my age, just chill for me. Let me see what we can get to. Well, bro, you still a kid, really. You are. You play video games. You got a oh. what, Salt City. Like it's that. Me, I say, somebody you. told me today. The barber told me. He was like, yeah, man, you know, I be playing in, in, in Salt City and GTA. One, I didn't know what the hell GTA was. I figured it no, out. No, that's not a game, though. It's it more, is a game. It's more than a game. Feel What's me? more than a game? It's, only, it's, it's a console that got a hand controller. No, it's not. It's a PC. And you got a keyboard and a mouse. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a separation. It's, it's different, <laughs> feel me? It's a role play server. Yeah. In New South City. Mm -hmm. A role play server. So if you wanted to have a, just think about it. If you wanted to have a podcast, yeah. you could fly into my city, all of y'all, mm -hmm. and we can get your custom pairs in so you can look like yourself. All y'all can look like yourself, and y'all could just have your podcast in my you city. Like role can play. me and my wife sign up? Yeah, we yeah, love the role up. play. Like, it's different. Like, y'all can have a whole, like, another. Another wedding in there. I, I know what you're getting at, but I'm just, I'm just keeping We're gonna it. We're going to call just, it Juicy City. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I was just trying to you feel me? Baby? So that's what you yeah, do on Twitch? Know. What's your Twitch name? I'm, I'm, it's I'm just, looking. My Twitch name is Sauce Garden. Oh, Sauce Garden. Okay. But it's a few more players that's making one. That's making a uh, RPC. I think Tyreek. I know Jamar, Jamar just made one. You know, it's a, it's a few guys. You know, I feel like I truly started the wave. I'm not saying I was the first, because I know Makai, Makai back then, he, he had one. But I feel like my RP server has gotten to the, like, biggest, yeah. like, You make all. money off of it? Yeah. Like, good money? I know you got money, but just, like, what, what, what's the number? What's the range of money you can make off a PC server or whatever the fuck you just said? Nah, for real, for real, like, I mean, just think about it like that. Like, there's some people, like, you got people like T Grizzly, he making six figures a month. Dang, a month? Yeah, I heard. A month. On video? How on a PC this again? Huh? How sorry. we do this again? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you the real. I'm talking about like it's 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 some it's some great money that come out of it. Well man, one, you're not gonna need your PC server <laughs> to uh get your parents and your family out of Detroit. You can do that, find yourself with the way you play, man. But congrats on a great season. You know, we've been trying to get this sit down done for a while and you know, a lot of times, man, you sit young dudes down and you feel like you got to impart all this wisdom on them and you got to help them understand and see the bigger picture. Your success is because you saw that walking in. And all I would say, man, is continue to be you, man. Continue to be authentic. And whether that's a mod, sauce, or wherever it is, it's been done the right way because, like you said, you got a foundation and you stand on that. And right. shoot, can't take that from you. Mm -hmm. My man, appreciate you, bro. Sure. Appreciate y'all, man. That joke, hey, that joke is long, bro. When he walked in, he, he, hey. oh, no, brother. Yeah, then he got on a little Chan uh, t shirt. Up, Who's that? Oh, the, the new little muscle. He, he, he got the new muscle. Show everybody they muscle. He did, he did gain some muscle. Yeah, he got nah, some. I threw it on for me. This, this T used to be kind of like a little baggy for me. I threw it on. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. They can still make a cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Nigga, still me kind of in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up.